So first of all, I think that uh, you can look and learn about everything from the lens of uh, behavioral economics. Uh, but every time we look at a problem from a behavioral economics perspective, we look at what are the human barriers for that, right? So imagine, for example, we looked at the rate in which people look for jobs. And we said, what is stopping people? Turns out being uh, told no is a very demoralizing uh, experience. Imagine you were on a date, uh, you, you were trying to date people, and you got one yes for every hundred no's. How would you motivate yourself in the morning and say, let me try again? Well, jobs are very much like that. Every day you wake up and you decide to apply for a job, and almost all the time you'll be uh, given a no, a refusal. How do you keep on being motivated? Now, if we thought that people don't have emotions, if we thought that people don't experience rejection, we would say, hey, people should just want a job at the end of the day and that should motivate them. But the reality is that the process of applying for, job, for jobs is incredibly demoralizing. So what do we do? How do we solve it? So one approach, for example, which I uh, often try to get my students to do, is to have a rule for behavior. I say, when you wake up in the morning, you apply for five jobs, and you don't do anything fun until you finish that. If you think about this routine, you just do it, yeah. right? It's not about being rejected or not, you just, you just do it. Another possibility that I try to encourage people to do is to try and vary how they look for a job and try to figure out what works slightly better and slightly worse, right? So, of course, with a job, the real outcome is to get a job. But you could say the process of learning how to get a job is also complex. So why don't you, in the process, give yourself points? You got a job interview, give yourself a point. You learn something in a job interview about how not to do something the next time, give yourself a point. So if you thought of this as as difficult as climbing a mountain, I mean, you know, something is very, very difficult about it, you would say, how would you create momentary rules, momentary enjoyment that are not dependent on arriving at a final outcome. Yeah. Then there's a the question of people who are already in the, jo the job market. Right? So there are people who are in a job, but not in a job they like, or not in a job that they are successful at. And the question is, how could they figure out what's better for them? And again, we could say, if people know what's better for them, they will just know it up front. But the reality is that trying to figure out what job works for us, under what capacity, is a very, very hard thing. So how do you get people to experiment with multiple jobs? How do you get them to try different things? Uh, how do you get people, even not in the first stage of a job, but later on, go on internships? Yeah, so first of all, the report was incredibly comprehensive. It covered lots of things. But if I thought about the, the main point from my perspective, right, and this is just my perspective, it's about the fact that little details matter, right? So when we think about human behavior in general, we say it is motivated by some goals. I want to be healthy. I want to make, have my kids grow up and prosper. I mean, we think about long-term goals. But when we look at what actually determines human behavior, it's often the little things that make things very difficult. And often we say, well, the little things shouldn't matter. They matter to a great degree. Actually, I don't think we can overemphasize how small things matter. And, and the study of behavioral economics shows over and over that you have a form designed in one way, people do as the form tell them. The form designed in a different way, people do something else. People have to return a letter to save money every month, they're not going to do it. I mean, there's lots of little details. So I would like to promote something like that computer hackers do. So what computer hackers do is they look at the computer system and they look at every movement of piece of information. This computer sends a handshake and a protocol and so on and so forth. And then they say, what can we break? Now, I think we need to do the first step. We need to look at the details of people's lives. We need to say, this person gets up and they need to put some money on their mobile phone because they don't have it. And then they have to walk a mile and go to a store and give somebody some money and move some money into their mobile account, and then they need to go back and do something. And we need to look at all the little details, and we need to realize how difficult they are. And because of that, we need to think about designing people's lives, not from the perspective of what goals they have, but from the perspective of the little annoyances in life and how we can prevent those.